I just wanted to share oh, oh, with you a little bit of the vision behind the orchard. A little bit of the vision behind the orchard. You know, this day, the 29th of February, and isn't it interesting that it's the 29th of February, a day that doesn't come round very often. Like, there is something unique about today. There is something special, I believe, that God has in his heart for today that doesn't come around very often. And that's not because Amy and I are clever. I promise you, we are not very clever. But God is here and God wants to meet with us in a special and unique and timely way. So embrace the kind of spirit of the 29th of February in expectancy for what God is going to do. Amen. Amen. So the vision, the vision behind today, really, this, this gathering is something that we have had in our hearts for a little while. It's really just a, an expression of this sense that we've had rumbling away in our hearts for a little while. And several months ago, um, God began to speak. And to be honest, this is probably the worst thing to say, quite honestly, but being really, really honest with you, events just for women are not my favorite thing. I shouldn't really say that. I love women. I've got loads of women friends. I think it's just that I love being around men. I love men as well. I love one particular man very, very much. But you know what? God began to speak. God began to speak about us gathering women together. And you know what? I can't deny, I can't deny that there is something that happens, isn't there? There's something that happens when we create this sacred space, when we carve out a space that is specifically for women. That there's a freedom in the room, I believe. There's like this dynamic in the room. There is an expectation, a hunger that is unique in a company of women. And so God began to speak quite persistently, actually, and what I sense God was saying was, it's time to gather the women. It's time to gather the women. And because I'm a brilliant Christian, I just ignored that voice for some time. And just to be clear, it wasn't like a booming voice from the sky. It was more like this quiet, persistent kind of inner thought that I knew wasn't my own, that didn't come from my own desires. And so then I talked to my sister about it, Amy, because that's kind of my go-to. And I said, so I've got this hunch that God might be saying, it's time to gather the women. And quite frankly, I was hoping that she would say, oh no, don't bother with that. We don't need to do that. There's loads of other women's gathering. No, she was like, me too. I think God's told us we need to gather the women. It's the same thing. And so we began to pray and to chat about what it might look like for us to gather a whole bunch of women together like this on the 29th of February. Actually, we hadn't planned the date just then, but I added that for dramatic effect. But <laughs> to gather women together, what it might look like for a whole bunch of women to meet like this and to get freed up, to get raised up, to be empowered, to fall more deeply in love with Jesus, to be released, to be and to do all that he has called us to do. I'm spitting, sorry, I'm feeling excited, <laughs> forgive me. And so I, I began to think about these verses in the book of Jeremiah, uh, verses that I love from Jeremiah 17, 7, and you'll see it, it's, uh, it's on the website, it's in the little booklet that you've got. Uh, and I'm going to read to you, actually, you've got the NIV there, but I'm going to read to you the New Living Translation, because I love the way some of the phrasing outworks in this translation. And it's about this tree, it's about this tree in, in uh, in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah is a prophet, and so he's prophesying to the people of God. But blessed are those who trust in the Lord and have made the Lord their hope and confidence. They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach down into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. And this metaphor of the tree, it just kind of grabbed my imagination, grabbed my attention. This tree that is planted by the water, that has its roots like running right down deep 
deep, deep towards the water. This tree that, that doesn't kind of freak out when the hottest days of summer hit, doesn't freak out when there isn't rain for like an extended period of time. In fact, this tree, its leaves are always green. This tree, it never fails to bear fruit. And, and this tree, really, this tree is about human flourishing. This description of this tree, it, it points us towards this secret, this, uh, this key to what it looks like to really thrive, to really thrive and to grow. N not just surviving, but a life of thriving. It points us towards the very thing that will lead us into life. When there are so many voices, so many signposts telling us, this is where you'll find life, this is where true freedom is, this is where you need to go, no. We look here to this tree because it's, it's within this metaphor that we're pointed towards the very key to life and it's trust in God. It is deep confidence in God, in the one who created and planted the tree in the first place. It's trust and confidence in a God that loves us unconditionally, that, that laid down his life for us. Trust in a God who is at work, who is always at work, whether we can see it or feel it. We trust, we have confidence in a God who is always at work through every single season of our lives. And so, Amy and I, we began to imagine this company of trees, an orchard, an orchard of trees, all with their roots running deep down to the water, kind of vibrant and vital. No matter what the changing elements might throw at it, lives that never stop producing fruit, good fruit, like fruit that will last, an orchard of women, an orchard of women that are deeply deeply and dynamically sustained by the power of God's presence and the truth of God's word. Not, not depleted or distracted by the values of the culture all around us, imperfect and yet perfectly loved, at peace, at peace in every season, weak and vulnerable and yet standing tall, empowered, and held only by the grace of God, only by the grace of God, and continuously bearing fruit, bearing fruit of a life that will be marked by compassion and love and justice and authenticity and sacrifice and freedom and peace and joy, deep joy. And so just before Amy comes up, the, the, the word that I had, for today was this word legacy. It's kind of an ostentatious word, isn't it? It feels a bit sort of grand, grandiose, legacy. But that's the word that I kept sensing God say to me over the last couple of weeks. And let, let, me, be, let me be transparent with you for a moment. Coming here for one day, like it's not going to change your life. But if coming here causes you to fall more in love with Jesus, if coming here today propels you into a deeper relationship with Jesus, if coming here propels you into a deeper confidence in what he's called you to do and called you to be, if it propels you into greater freedom, into a passionate obedience to follow Jesus, then that will change your life. And it might just change the world as well. And so this isn't really about a conference or event or a gathering. This is about legacy. This is about the kingdom of God on the move. Here in this city, but right across this nation. The kingdom of God is on the move. And this is about kingdom fruit. Kingdom fruit. It's about seeds being planted in our lives, in this atmosphere of worship and vulnerability that will grow in our lives into a legacy, a legacy of liberation, a legacy of empowerment that will impact generation after generation. That is what we're believing for.